What is happening, people? It is Brian Alzer with NeverSafe.com. And if you guys watched a couple videos ago, there was a video where I was talking about robbing Brian Shaw's personal gym. Now, if you saw that video, remember that I was walking around Brian's gym with him talking about some piece of equipment that he owns that I do not own that I would really like to own. And some of those are very, very expensive. But I have actually invested in two of them. The first one being the bamboo bar, which you guys saw Juju Mifu and myself benching with just a couple videos ago, and then also the Thomas Inch Dumbbell. Now, the Thomas Inch Dumbbell is a massive piece of lifting and strongman history, so I'm gonna go into a good bit of that just here in a second. It's seriously one of the most deceptive lifting things I've ever seen in my entire life. It only weighs 175 pounds, but I swear to you, the thing is glued to the floor. Now, I am by no means an impressive grip athlete. It's not something I've ever really focused on. However, after going to Brian's house and playing around with that inch dumbbell and hearing just how big of a part of history it is, I am super, super excited about trying to be able to pick this thing up, hopefully within a couple years. Which is why you guys are seeing more grip stuff, because as I'm learning, I'm trying to share. But while we're out in Colorado with Brian, he was even talking about how big of a deal it was to even clean and press this thing, because it was part of the Arnold Strongman Classic for years. Up to a couple years ago, this is actually the dumbbell that they would use to clean and press for reps on the main stage. And there were actually a lot of zeros at that time. Now the sport has evolved a ton since then. However, it is cool to be able to clean and press the same exact dumbbell that was used on the Arnold stage. So uh, Brian was very, very encouraging for me to do that while I was at his house and I was lucky enough to do that. And after I did it, it felt so awesome just because it was a completely different thing. I'm gonna talk about the differences here in just a couple minutes. I talk about the history of the dumbbell, but man, it was such a cool experience that I knew that I had to have one at my gym. And then I thought it would also be a really cool thing because we have a ton of people who come and visit my gym on a pretty regular basis. So as people come through the door, it's gonna be interesting to see who can pick it up and who can't. And I think it's gonna be a thing that if you can actually deadlift this dumbbell and hold it to a down command, you get a free membership for life. So if you do want to try your hand at it, make sure you email me at neverstate.gmail.com and we will set up a visit. But right now, I'm gonna to explain to you why this thing is so difficult. People, meet the inch dumbbell. Inch dumbbell? Meet the people. Now, the inch dumbbell is an implement that I've heard about for years, but I've never actually seen one in real life until I went to Brian Shaw's recently. Now, before this, I actually believed that the inch had something to do with the dimensions of the dumbbell, as I'm sure many of you are thinking the same exact thing. But as usual, I was wrong. So this thing's actually called the Thomas Inch Dumbbell, and it's named after an old tiny strongman guy who used to travel around challenging people to lift it. This is how this dude made his money. Now, as with many other shows that were traveling around in the early 1900s, it is very much guess that possibly he was doing this by some sort of hoax. However, you can't take anything away from the guy because he was a champion strongman, as well as was able to do some absolutely amazing feats of strength. So whether he did do it or didn't do it is still up for debate, but I want to go ahead and believe they did it. Despite every grip guy telling me that he did it. I believe in you, Tommy. So as I just mentioned, he would travel around from place to place, challenging people to pick it up. Now, this guy was known for being able to pick up thick handled dumbbells. This one just in particular is especially tough because of the dimensions of the handle as well as the round globes. These two things make it kind of spinny. Now this is a tradition that still holds up today. You will often see these things at different fitness expos and different challenges where a certain amount of money is put up that if someone can actually pick this thing up and move it to a certain place, then they will win that amount of money. And most of the time, the owner of the dumbbell goes home with that money. The problem with this thing is that it's extremely deceptive because you're used to seeing circus dumbbells that are very much larger. If you look at a Slater Bell, it looks enormous compared to this thing. If you grab a 70 pound rope dumbbell and you just put it next to it, it looks kind of comparable. So without saying, this thing is obviously extremely, extremely dense. However, these globes make it even harder because as you go to pick it up, it tends to roll. And as soon as it starts rolling, that 175 pounds of pressure starts creating some force and is very tough to stop. Now, if you had 175 pounds on a dumbbell or a barbell or something with knurling, picking it up really would not be that tough because of the small diameter of the handle plus a little bit of extra grip. But this dumbbell's handle is approximately the same circumference as a soda can. So if you can grab a soda can, everyone should have some idea of what a soda can feels like. When you grab that, you add 175 pounds of pressure to it and you make it smooth and spinny. This is why it's going to be years before I pick it up. But I am excited about working towards it. Now there are a ton of techniques that people use to lift this thing up trying different things. But one way to show that it doesn't spin at all that guys have actually come to doing is they will stick empty soda cans on top of it and then pick it up while those soda cans do not move to show that it did not spin at all. I will demonstrate this now. Now, as far as what I've actually done with this, I'm kind of skewed because the only person I've actually seen do anything with it is four-time World Strongest Man Brian Shaw, who is actually able to pick them up two at the same time. Farmers walk them. He can clean and press them. I think he did a set of five on the incline bench press with them. Literally, there's not one other person in the entire world that I've ever seen pick it up, at least not in real life. So everyone at my gym is relegated to working their grip a ton of different ways until one of us gets crowned king because they picked this thing up first. I have a feeling it is going to be Andy Shadio, David Lee, 
<laughs> or possibly Billy. I'm a, I'm a, I think I'm gonna make a point of it. I yeah. think I'd like I'd like to have something in the gym. Yeah, be nice. I think it's gonna come down between Billy and and Andy, and yeah. maybe Dave if he practices it. Yeah. But while we're waiting on that, we were actually able to do the cleanup press with it as kind of a circus dumbo, which is really nice because it's already loaded to 175 pounds, which is a decent weight for anybody. It's a good weight to jump up on. Now, I will tell you specifically, this dumbbell is a completely different experience using it as a circus dumbbell because when you have a bigger dumbbell like the Slater Bell or a plate loader dumbbell, you're able to clean it in a fashion where you almost hinge the thing against your hips and throw it up. That is substantially easier than this because of how short it is. You can't actually post on your body anywhere, so you can do a massive double arm super dumbbell clean. And then once you get to the rack, it feels completely different because instead of having a normal circus dumbbell where you kind of post it out here, once you throw and catch that thing, your press might be four to six inches of actual movement of that dumbbell. That's why I always say circus dumbbell is more of a balancing act than an actual feat of true pressing strength. Well, with this guy, once you rack him, because of how compact it is, you get into almost a tricep -y pushback. And then once you actually have it in the rack, there's not a lot for it to sit onto, so it feels much more like it's in your hand than actually posted on your bone structure. So the press is completely different. Now, 175 pounds isn't a terrible weight for me to be pressing as far as circus dumbbell goes. So this Saturday, I thought it'd be a good idea to go at the top very minute for 10 minutes and just get a single clean and press. So this was all going great and I was actually feeling really good about it because I've needed a win. So I was going through it and feeling great and Andy was there, Uncle Nick was there, everyone was kind of cheering me on. And then uh, Andy actually walked up and said, why don't you try it for a double once? So this is round six and I did it for a double. Albeit the second rep was very, but when somebody challenges you to do something, you typically pick that up. So Andy told me that he thought that I should do doubles for the remainder of the 10 minutes, which I ended up doing, and I'm very happy that I did. I will say doing two reps a minute for 10 minutes with this dumbbell cleaning both reps would probably kill me. And by probably, I mean it would. All right guys, so yeah, so when you see this thing being used in a bunch of workouts and things like that, you'll have an idea of what it is and why it is so important and why it is so significant in the gym. And maybe some year you'll tune in and see me pick it up. It's actually gonna be a very fun time having the group of guys that we have racing towards to see who's gonna pick this thing up first. Maybe we'll throw some money towards it and see if the person who picks it up first actually gains all that cash. Maybe we should have like a bucket where you have to pay a dollar to attempt it as many times as you want. And then in two, three years, whatever first person is to pick it up, they probably have a decent amount of money for picking it up. I'm gonna go get bigger hand implants. Hand plants? Hand plants. Hand plants. Hand plants.com. Plants. 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 Don't type that in your search engine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you should not type that in. Just like cornhole. <laughs> You do not want to Google cornhole. But guys, we actually do have some raw footage of when we actually got the dumbbell. Coming in, talking about it, we were trying to pick it up out of thing. It was pretty interesting and entertaining. However, I did not want to bore you guys with it. I just want to let you guys know about this piece of equipment, why it's important, and all those types of things. So I'm going to run into that raw footage now. If you guys do want to see us kind of mess around, throw some predictions of who's going to get it, just kind of do our normal gym stuff, except with an inch dumbbell. I'm gonna keep that now. Otherwise, guys, I appreciate you guys watching the video, staying with me. I will catch you later week, but until I do go out to something amazing with lives, keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. I'll see you then. So, when you get a Thomas Inch dumbbell, this is how it shows up. I was, uh, I was getting ready to work out, but just got the call that this showed up, so ran down the end of the driveway, and here we are. Well, it's two big cannonballs. <laughs> All right, who's gonna pick it up out of there? You can only do it one hand. The owner of the gym. Go ahead, Billy. The owner of the gym. Can I do it Brian? one hand? All right, I'll. Mike. So is it I not gonna come out there? Is it not gonna come out of the box till Andy comes in? Where's Dave Lee? <laughs> All right, I'll give it a shot. You want some cheater sauce? It spins. Chalk up. <laughs> I think. Ah, how humbling. Nope. Just as hard as ever? Yeah. <laughs> it spins around a lot. Well, it will forever be in the box. It never won't be in this box. Thomas H. Dumbbell. That's 
see if he's got the weight anywhere on it. Does not have the weight anywhere on it, so we're gonna have to weigh it. Break out the scale. But uh, usually they're supposed to be around 172. I know Brian's are like 176. We got this dumbo from the same place that Brian got his. So theoretically, it'd be like 170 something. I'm really hoping that we're gonna be a little heavier than Brian. So we said Brian's was somewhere around 176.8, right? Six, somewhere around there. His was 176.2 and 176.8, right? 0.8 maybe? I don't know. What's your guess? So are we playing with decibels? Are we playing, uh, I'm gonna go 177. Okay. Guys. I'm, no, it's 177. I'm gonna say 175.9. 175 175.9? Are we playing Price's Right rules? I'm saying 174.6 because no one else has said it. Okay. Low ballin'. We'll go there. The price is right. <laughs> one seventy-five point six. Oh Nick. man, Nick, how close were you? What'd you? One seventy-five point what? One seventy-five point nine. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> so one seventy-five point six. They're actually lighter than Brian Shaw's. So if we pick this up, then we're still gonna have to go to Brian's house to pick his up. But I have these the sneaking suspicion that that thing's gonna stay on the ground at least for me personally. Uh, Literally years before I'll be able to pick that thing up. I'm, I'm gonna really start training my grip hard, um, but still, I think it'll probably be years before I'll be able to get it. I think Andy will be able to pick it up probably within, I'd say six months to a year, I think he'll break the ground. Um, yeah, I don't know. Out of everyone here at our gym, I'm not sure who's gonna be the first one to pick it up. I think it'll probably be Billy. I'm a, I'm a, I think I'm gonna make a point of it. I yeah. think I'd like I'd like to have something in the gym. Yeah, be nice. I think it's gonna come down between Billy and and Andy and yeah. maybe Dave if he practices it. Yeah, because he's got some strong grip strength. He's got old man. <laughs> grip strength, man. But I I think the rest of us have a substantial amount of training time before that thing goes anywhere. I would agree. I'm gonna press it though. Yeah. I'm just gonna stick to guessing the weight because I seem to be a lot better at that <laughs> than picking that Ge thing up. Guessing the weights definitely. Definitely easier than picking it up. I mean, there's literally infinite possibilities of how much that thing could weigh. All right, guys, so to put this in perspective, this is the inch dumbbell. This is a rubber Rogue 60 pound dumbbell. So now you can see the difference. Now you can see the difference in size. It's really not that big of a difference. The only difference is the density. So the one that Nick has over here, this is 175 pounds. That's 60 pounds. That's the difference. Nick, how long do you think it'll be before you can pick up the inch dumbbell? Probably years. Think like one, two years? Mm, on, if I'm lucky. Yeah, I think yeah. you're doing two years now. Like, like Andy said, Andy, you said what, you've been training grip for 12 years? Yeah, like religiously grip. I haven't had the opportunity to train with an inch dumbbell, um, but I've been doing grip stuff, thick bar, pinch, crush, whatever, and I'm still chasing that. So. But you, you touched that like 12 years ago. First time I touched it was like 10, 12 years ago. Brian's original, uh, Brian Shaw's original inch replica that he made by, or he had made by his iron guys out in Colorado before he got his double set for Christmas this year. It was humbling. Like it's, oh, it's a 172, 173, whatever it is. On well, a normal dumbbell, that's not that hard to pick up. Right, you could pick up yeah, all day long. a little chalk and you yeah. can pick it up, even do shr maybe shrug, you know, yeah, rub, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a whole nother animal. And he's got hands made for gripping things that's and an excuse. Been doing it for 12 that's years. That's an excuse. Don't listen. Hey, yes, yeah, tell them that because I thought that too. By guys with big hands that hear guys saying, oh, your hand size, it's got to be about hand size. Well, you know what? I don't say stuff. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Go black and white and then do the whistle thing and then come back. Don't say stuff about guys with short arms that can press. Like this is their 100%. lockout. 100%. Yep. I'm a foot over that. Yep. That's just what I have to deal with. Yep. Just like with grip, like, yes, I'm fortunate to have a larger hand, um, but that's not, that shouldn't inhibit you. No. It shouldn't inhibit you from being good at anything. Right. Having long arms shouldn't inhibit you of being, a press, being good at press. Having smaller fingers or whatever, thinner wrist, um, shouldn't inhibit you from being good at something. That's no. just an excuse. No excuses. No excuses. I'm really good at pushing his buttons. 